engine of 1400 or 1500 puppies a year mm -hmm. and two out of every three of those will go on to change the life of a blind or partially sighted person. This is Jody. So we have 260 brood bitches which are all the guide dog moms and we have 90 stud dogs, so all the dads and it's very scientific and research based in terms of which dogs are mated with which dogs um, and all our dogs are really health screened and their temperament regularly checked because the, the breeding stock are the best of the best and yes so all the matings take place here but all those dogs live with families so they're pet dogs with families, volunteers who look after them and most of the puppies are born in volunteers' homes. So we found it's best for the puppies. The first six weeks in the nest is important. So the pups are born in the homes and then they come in here at six weeks of age. So one of our biggest fundraising. Um, the week after they're here, they go off to their puppy walking schemes. So there's certain things that need to be done given that they go out on a Tuesday if they're going north they go out on a Thursday if they're going south so they would come in the previous Tuesday or Thursday the day after so the Wednesday or the Friday they'd be like microchipped and they'd have their vaccinations and they would be um, puppy profiled so that's working out whether they're essentially extreme extrovert just extrovert introvert or extreme introverts and uh, the kind of temperament that they are will determine the career that they go on to um, the other thing that happens while they're here is that they um, spend time with our puppy socialisers who are volunteers who in one sense just play with the puppies but actually it's quite scientific in the sense that it's about getting them used to as many different sounds, sights, smells, hopefully not tastes unless they eat something they shouldn't. 4%, a very small percentage, will be assessed as not suitable to go on to be guide dogs. And that's not because they're not wonderful dogs, but we call them um, high-level introverts, which means they're not going to have the confidence to go through our training program and guide a blind person. Some of those go to other assistance dogs organisations where the work is different. Um, they can be more reliant on the handler and they have less decisions to make than a guide dog does. I mean the pups that leave here, leave here at seven weeks of age, between seven and eight weeks of age. We've got volunteer drivers drive them all over the country, so some pups will go to Northern Ireland, some pups will go to Scotland, some will go down to London, um, and all over the country. Mm -hmm. And the puppy walkers are volunteers, so they will live with a volunteer for the first 12 months of their life, and during that time they'll be they'll be getting used to all the sights and the sounds of everyday life, they'll be learning good social behaviour, so that when they start their formal training, they're nice, settled, well-behaved um, pups or young dogs by that time. They'll probably be 14 months of age and they're ready to learn the guiding role, to learn how to guide somebody. Mm -hmm. Had Faldo on the 5th of November, which was fireworks evening. And I've got him for approximately another three weeks up until half term. Oh, no. So they go, they stay with the breeder for about seven, until about seven weeks old. Then they go up to the breeding centre for a week, and then they um, they assess them, look at them, see how they how they are, and whether they're able to go to about to be a guide dog, basically. Yeah. Sit. Down, down, down. Good boy. Good boy. Then um, my supervisor at the moment is called Kath. And she comes to see me every approximately every three weeks, and then she comes to see how I'm getting on, how if I've got any questions that I'd like to ask, see how Faldo is doing, and we usually go out for a walk. Um, last time I saw Kath, we went just for a walk around here to see how he's getting on, like we just did just now to see like with other dogs. Um, and the time before that, when I saw Kath, we went to Sainsbury's and then see how he's getting on walking around shops. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are you are monitored yeah. throughout the whole time. 
trying to do with Faldo because he's so interested in people, he's very friendly and, and with other dogs as well, I try and cross over the road if I can. <laughs> and quite Like I say, it's quite difficult because of living in this area and knowing quite a few people. If I do see another person, another dog, then I try and cross over the road to try and distract him. Um, I can try and distract him. Sometimes I take a squeaky toy, so I distract him in that way. Or I take some food to try and distract him as well. But more than not, I try and cross over the road to avoid people and so that we can carry on walking. Mm -hmm. The, the, to start with, it's sit, um, wait, down, um, and blowing the whist whistle, saying the words busy, busy, mm -hmm. um, for the toilet as well. Um, um, when you're on the lead, Faldo, come, yeah. making him, and I think I said it already, but like, wait, if you're waiting at the, the road. So going from one curb to the next curb, but around the obstacles and learning how to allow space to go around those obstacles and learning how not to go underneath things that their owner won't be able to go under, things like that. Um, by then they've already got lots of confidence, those dogs, because they've been puppy walk, so they've been to lots of different places and environments. Um, and then they start thinking about, well, which guide dog owner will they suit? Who, who could they possibly um, support the best? So they'll be thinking about how fast does that dog walk, what sort of uh, work is it going to do, is it going to be very busy in London, is it going to be a, a quiet life where it only does a little walk every day, do they need lots of entertaining that dog or are they quite chilled, would they be quite happy to just do a little bit, how tall are they, um, how much do they pull on the harness and all of these things affect who they then suit. So if you've got an elderly lady who maybe needs a dog to walk quite slowly, not pull too much, um, might not do that much work. Or you could have a professional chap who's working in London, is very fast at walking, quite tall maybe. And so we're thinking about all those different elements whilst we're getting to, to know the dogs better and to train them and to think what could that dog enjoy and cope with. And then when they're um, at the point they're nearly ready to finish their training, so it could be 18 months-ish, um, they will then match them. So they'll take them out to meet a potential guide dog owner and work out whether they're the right dog for that owner and that owner, whether they like that dog. And once all that's done, they finish off the training and then they train the two together. So we have kennels on site, we have obstacle courses, we have an indoor and an outdoor obstacle course. Um, and we have dog care welfare team, we have a special hospital block for poorly dogs. But predominantly, that's, it's people, other than that, that are here, that are doing that training. Um, do you mind if we talk about you and Chloe for a bit? No, it's fine. Cliver is my eighth yeah. dog. <laughs> so I've had uh, black Labradors, yellow Labradors, I've had golden retrievers, and I've had Labrador retriever crosses. It's a whole lot. I was 23 when I had my first one on the 3rd of February 1991, so it's just over 25 years for me. In one respect it's quite an alien thing, you know, it's easy to, and quite intuitive to just walk with a dog on the lead if you can see where you're going. But to learn how to, firstly how to hold the handle and then how to how to uh, read what you're being told through the handle and then to walk the right speed and pick up on when someone, when someone, I'll say initially, 
because you talk with a human holding the other end. So it's how to pick up when someone is pausing or hesitating, changing direction, speeding up, slowing down. So you have to do all of that while remembering your route and sometimes you'll turn to get around an obstacle, sometimes you'll sidestep to get around an obstacle. Um, and also um, it's a question of learning how to correct the dog if he makes a mistake and when to do it and also how to praise up the dog without getting him to get too overexcited and losing his focus. You have to give your, your dog its flea treatment um, once a month and then they have a full checkup every six months and then once a year they'll have their booster. This is like their kind of uh, vaccination for immuni immunity and things like that. Any other conditions that they could typically get. Oh and yes the other thing they have every six months is their worming tablet of course. set for retirement obviously because just like a person it depends how it goes but it's also a partnership with a guide dog and an owner so we try and get our dogs to work until they're around um, sort of nine and a half ten and a half that sort of age um, Clover doesn't have an overly demanding life so in theory she should be able to work quite comfortably up to that age hopefully um, we plan when we think maybe she'll be ready to retire so we don't just sort of um, make a decision and that's it she retires so the uh, instructors come and visit us every year they watch us work so they make sure that the dogs are still working happily they check that the weight and the health of the dog is still okay and they go to the vet every six months so they get checked anyway and then um, they'll talk to me when Clover's sort of nine-ish and say how do I feel do I want her to continue if she's still healthy? Or they may say she's slowing up an awful lot, she doesn't seem that focused. Some dogs, like humans, suffer with memory, mm. or they could get eye problems, ear problems, you know, any, any person gets different ailments. Um, so they'll look at all of that, and then they'll decide, probably, hopefully, a, a good year before we actually retire her to, to start planning for that. Because if they can plan for that, then hopefully they can get us um, a replacement dog without me having a big gap without a guy.